here on the Trading Post, and time now for our monthly visit with Brian Johnson from the Community Foundation. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Randy. How are you? I'm dry. That's a good thing. Yeah, dried out after that nice rain uh, yesterday. I was so. going to say, you, you guys had a little water down your way, too. We though. did, but we could definitely use it. Yes. My garden's appreciating that. Uh, so. My grass is starting to green <laughs> up again, which means yes. we'll have to mow. Oh, but, but yeah. yeah, that's a good problem to have. It was nice having that little break there. Yeah. Yeah. So. We have a few things going on. I was going to say, just, just a little, little bit, a little about. bit going so on. We're going to talk about some grants here in a bit, but a few things that are um, current events. Of course, a reminder: we do have a matching opportunity through Lilly Endowment. Mm -hmm. yes, don't want to forget about that. Yep, we're well into that. Um, we're over two hundred ten thousand dollars raised of our three hundred seventy-five thousand dollar goal, and that's towards specifically towards community funds okay. that makes our community grants. So appreciate everybody that's participated in that. Um, and, and that's kind of wild yet though, right? Does. I mean, it, so there's... We, we have the opportunity to raise up to $375,000. Um, Lilly Endowment, Endowment will match that with $750,000. Um, so that'll turn into about $50,000 every year in additional grants. Awesome. Um, it, we have the opportunity to go through the end of 2025 okay. or when we meet our goal. So I'm not a math genius, but I can realize that we're over halfway there. Yeah. So maybe by the end of this year, well, that would be a nice uh, goal to have. Be a good opportunity. So um, thanks to everybody who's participated in that. If you're interested in that, let us know. We can talk to you a little bit more about how that works. Um, they are community funds, so mm -hmm. our our grant committee and our board distribute those to the most current pressing needs but we do have a lot of families who have created funds um, kind of a way to remember and a little piece of trivia um, the very first fund created within the community foundation within the northern indiana community foundation all three was actually a community fund the baxter inc fund mm -hmm. um, the baxter name fran and yeah. park and ernie are synonymous with rochester yeah. Um, one of the first houses I owned in Rochester actually had a Baxter Pharmacy wow. sticker on the inside wow. with medical information say do this, don't do that. Yeah. And, um, so neat to see how that fund has continued yeah. to support in, in all those community funds. So if you're interested in that, um, that matching opportunity, again, $2 for every dollar raised. It turns into good things for our community. Great deal. Talking about it's summer out there, summer scholarships. Um, we say summer scholarships, but really these are um, primarily for students who are currently in college or planning to continue their education at like a graduate level or maybe doctor's level. Um, some applications that we have available, um, Ginger Miller Higher Education. Ginger was an early board member and a, a strong advocate for education that provides for um, post bachelor's degree study so students who are going back for a master's or a doctorate um, apply for that run um, a name familiar with our community Frederick Rakestraw mm -hmm. um, the Frederick Rakestraw Law Scholarship helps students who um, spend at least three years at Rochester schools and are continuing to uh, pursue a degree in the School of Law okay so um, Phillips Brahman, Marjorie Phillips, and, uh, mm -hmm. some name synonymous with Rochester Sports. Yes. She probably took a few tickets from me. She uh, took a few tickets from you. Several. <laughs> um, she took a few tickets from many generations. Um, created a scholarship, helps students who have graduated from Rochester High School who have completed at least one year at Purdue University. Um, and then we also have the Back Home Again in Indiana scholarship that can help provide scholarships for maybe students who are a non-traditional student so you think about somebody who has completed the high school equivalency or maybe going back to school after a number of years of being out or uh, maybe just even pursuing something like a certificate or training for mm -hmm. their current career so pretty flexible there so the deadline for all of those scholarships is july 8th be here um, before you know it be here before you know it um, you can find the application on our website, nicf.org, and you can click on the Fulton County Scholarships link, and, and it will guide you through the process of the application. If you have any questions, reach out to our scholarship coordinator, Shannon Berger. Um, she'd be more than happy to help you with any questions or difficulties, or even if 
you just want to know do I qualify for any of these scholarships um, reach out to Shannon and have a conversation with her so um, a few things that are upcoming um, Fulton County Women's Giving Circle um, we haven't talked about that group in a little while but um, we're starting to get some plans together for a fall granting event also members keep an eye out for an invitation for that in the near future and also our grant application for that will be open soon um, those are video grant applications so make a video send it in if you don't know how to make a video ask a youth and they'll help <laughs> yeah. you with that yeah, just go to the school uh, it's it's really a fun process and gives our committee a, a neat opportunity to kind of see inside the organization and see how the projects really impact people. Mm -hmm. so, so keep an eye open for that if you are a member of Fulton County Women's Giving Circle thank you for being a member um, a reminder dues for that group um, $120 a year and half of that goes to an endowment fund that has grown um, we're over $80,000 in that awesome. endowment fund and then half of that goes out to current grants in the community so um, that will be going out um, later this year and I'm sure they'll be looking for uh, new members all the time looking too. for new members so if you are a current member and haven't paid your dues pay your dues um, so that you can vote this fall if you are a new member or interested in what the group does don't hesitate to reach out to us um, and we can give you some details a really neat project and the fact that all of these dues are compiled and pooled and then make a huge impact. Yeah. So um, a neat organization to be a part of. We'll talk more about that in future mm -hmm. programs, but um, just uh, putting a plug out there again for the Fulton County Women's Giving Circle. Um, wanted to say a thank you to everybody who came out to Richland Restoration Nature Park. Um, we had an event out there on June 4th. Um, mm -hmm. Had a great turnout. It's always interesting to me to hear how many people say I didn't realize this park was here. <laughs> um, it's 60 acres mm -hmm. and it's very diverse ground. So um, it was also amusing to me to hear how many people have been to the dog park, but didn't realize there's a whole nother park right behind the Keep tree. Keep on line. driving back. So, um, we're very appreciative of the group that put together the dog park. Um, it gets used all the time. Um, there's some new trails that the park board has worked on developing. So um, it was neat to see and have people experience the park and, and learn about what's there. So thanks to the, the Fulton County Parks Board and Friends of the Park and everybody who make that area possible. It's been exciting to see the growth of that and see how kind of an area that wasn't really that great in our community has turned into really a gem in the mm -hmm. community. So. Um, thanks to all who came out. Um, I want to say another thank you to somebody that is retiring <laughs> at the end of this week. Um, a, sh a big shout out to current fire chief Tom Butler um, has served the community for so many years. Um, we appreciate Tom and all that he's done for the community. Um, we've had the opportunity to work with him the last few years as he has been a, a strong advocate for Lucas devices, an automatic chest compression mm -hmm. um, device that all of the fire departments around the community are equipped with. Um, there's a lot of stories he stops in occasionally and says, hey, we, we had a good experience with this and this device really helped us in some cases save lives. So um, he's been a spokesperson for that and for a lot of things. Um, I know the CPR class, mm -hmm. Um, this February, myself and one of my sons had the opportunity to go through the CPR class that the fire department um, puts on, and there were actually so many people they had to call Chief Butler and <laughs> come help be a trainer. So he was able, he was actually our hands on trainer for that part of the class. So, um, and there have been so many people that have gone through those classes, and the combination of having some great first responders in our community um, throughout the whole county. Um, and people trained in CPR so that when you're in a situation, hopefully I never have to use the information that was taught me, but if needed, I feel confident that I can help and, and um, in large part that's because of the promotion the fire department and Chief Butler have done for, 
for those programs. So um, a huge shout out and a thank you for all the years of service um, for the many lives saved and many lives impacted. So um, we appreciate your service and um, appreciate all you have done for the community. And I know he's not going anywhere, yeah. but um, <laughs> we want to say thank you to him. There you go. So um, some other things that are coming up, it's almost July. Which means fair. It's fair it's season. Fair season. So, had an opportunity last night to participate in some of the 4-H project judging, uh -huh. and that's always fun to see kids that have been working all spring on projects and bringing them in, yeah. and some of the things that they learned. As a parent, it's not quite as much fun because <laughs> you're saying this is due. We need to get uh -huh. this done. We got um, less than a day. Yes. <laughs> So far, nothing's been laid from our house. Well, but, that's good. Um, it's neat to see the, the development that happens through 4-H. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking forward to the fair um, coming up here in a couple of weeks. Um, it will be an exciting time. Um, a few things that we've been able to support out at the fairgrounds. Um, earlier this year, we are actually able to help um, with some improvements at the goat barn. Cool. Um, they had a less than ideal pin situation. And, um, have been able to make some changes with that and so um, looking forward to having a safe environment for the goats had a conversation with somebody who said well we always have to carry bolt cutters in case we need to cut a goat's head out yeah. of the fence so that they can free themselves or jump over the fence and chase them around um, those situations have been remedied so thanks to the folks that are involved with the goat project for um, looking at that a few years ago, um, able to provide a grant to help put a new roof on the community building. Um, it's always helpful. It's always helpful to have a roof. Yeah. Um, that's a building that I'll spend some time in yeah. during the fair. Um, going way back, um, one of the early grants that the foundation was able to help with, um, thanks to Lilly Endowment, um, were some pretty significant renovations at the Everett Smith building. Mm. Um, that was back in 1999 when that project happen so um, the other thing about the fair is we actually have a Fulton County 4-H fair fund um, it's actually the, the Fulton County 4-H fund okay. um, nobody really calls it that <laughs> a lot of times they say that fund that Joanne Bendel helped start ah. um, Joanne was a strong advocate of 4-H and worked tirelessly to help um, develop a fund to support the 4-H program. So that fund has grown to over $130,000 now. And um, since it started providing grants, um, has granted almost $47,000 to help with various needs. A lot of times they've used that for things like bleachers. Mm -hmm. and at one point there was a set of bleachers out there that you probably weren't, probably wasn't a good idea no, to sit. Probably not. Um, things like that, um, things like doors for community building, some projects out around the fairgrounds that have helped maintain and improve some of the fairgrounds. So um, thanks to Joanne for her tireless work and support of 4-H. Um, and we're looking forward to the fair. Um, I haven't seen the weather forecast yet. Always a, always a hot so time, but there yeah. are some air conditioned yes. buildings out there to, to check out. and. Um, we're looking forward to the fair. So thanks to all that's involved, um, the 4-H Council, the fair board, um, everybody who works tirelessly to have a good experience at the fair. So looking forward to that. Yes, always a good week. Um, talking about grants, we were talking about community fund grants earlier. Um, we have um, recently granted um, a grant to Recovery Cafe. Okay. Um, we have a program now, we've, we've talked about impact grants and community support grants, um, but we also have a program called micro grants. Mm. So now you can guess that they're probably smaller grants, ah, smaller yes. application, um, quicker time frame, um, but the Recovery Cafe approached us with a idea to help teach some of their members coding. Oh. So you know how to build mobile apps okay. and things like that. Um, I don't know that stuff. I don't know that stuff. So they're going to teach um, some of their some of their members that those skills. Um, everybody's carrying around one of these devices in their <laughs> pockets that has things like 
games or uh, emails. Emails. <laughs> I mean, you think about now. I can carry my emails around with me. I don't have to sit at a computer. Where did that come from? Well, somebody yeah. developed an app that can do that. They say there's an app for that, and there usually there is. Probably is. If there's not, somebody the group from find Recovery one. Cafe is going to learn how to do coding. You so can. You can um, they'll be able to develop um, apps and and create some employment skills through that as well. So um, thanks to Recovery Cafe, all that they do and looking at this program, our grant was for $1,000 and we were able to help support that program with some cool. of the equipment that they need. So awesome. um, the last thing that I wanted to talk about today was um, talking about some of our township grants. Oh, yes. We have a couple of townships that have funds. We talked about the applications earlier this year, um, but um, we we're able to award some grants to some different organizations. So we have township funds for the Kiwana Union Township area and also Liberty Township. Important grants. Important grants. So a couple of grants from the Union Township, Kiwana Union Township. Um, we were able to provide a grant to help support the Kiwana Union Township Library Summer Reading Program. A really neat thing where they actually provide books for the participants. So you get to go to the library, obviously check out books, but you can take home a book that you can keep, um, and they they provide those on a regular basis. So a really neat program to help build um, reading collections at home and a book that I can take home and say, it's mine, That's and right. I can read it whenever <laughs> I want to. So um, a neat program there, thanks to the library, they do so many mm -hmm. services. Um, another grant that we were able to provide was for Junior Achievement for Caston for the 8th grade Finance Park Program. Mm -hmm. Students get to go and experience a day in the life of being somebody involved in the community. I know some kids have come back and said, I got to be mayor for the day, uh -huh. or I was a business owner for yeah. the day, or I was a banker, or I was a realtor for the day, and they get to kind of learn those real world skills, how business and communities function. Um, from a financial perspective. Awesome. So some of those skills. Um, another group that we were able to support was the Hardery. Um, they are creating what they're calling the Community Channel. So this is going to be a regular um, update on social media and different web presence um, to provide information about current events going mm -hmm. on in the commu Kiwana community. So um, the Hardery is an organization that has really done some pretty cool things in Kiwana, providing entertainment, providing gathering space, providing um, opportunities for community members to get together and um, enjoy common interests. Cool. So, um, and then also Liberty Township, we were able to provide two grants there. Um, another grant to Junior Achievement for their program at the Cast in Second Grade, um, a really great program where um, volunteers go actually go into the school and have an opportunity to work with a specific class and learn about finance and um, learn some of those everyday skills. So um, a neat program there. And then also the Fulton Liberty Lions, sprucing up Fulton, a oh. project to provide some beautification. Um, I think I heard some rumor about some flowers mm, cool. and things on Main Street there in Fulton. As you go through, a lot of people travel travel to and through Fulton and it'll be nice to see how this project makes Main Street look pretty cool. So thanks to all the organizations that um, are participating in these programs and applied for grants. Congratulations. Um, we appreciate all you do in the community. So that was a lot of stuff. That was a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. I don't feel like I didn't stop talking. Yeah. So I'm going to give some reminders here. Yes, yeah, so perfect. Lily Endowment Matching for Community Funds. Give us a holler if you're interested in that. Summer scholarships, the application is due July 8th. Um, check that out, nicf.org. Click on the Fulton County Grants, or Fulton County Scholarships and get that um, application started. Um, Women's Giving Circle, if you're a member and haven't paid your dues yet this year, do that. If you're interested in becoming a member, we'd love to talk to you. If you're a member and you think of somebody that should be a member, invite them to join as well. The more more members we have, the more impact we can make in the community. So, um, if anybody has questions about what we talked about, wants to learn more about the Community Foundation, don't hesitate to check us out online, nicf.org. Um, you can find us on Facebook, 
our scavenger hunt. And this is the last week for Fulton Ooh, County, so you got okay. one last chance one to win. Last. Um, it should be a fun location. Um, check us out, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. We have information about all three counties on there as well. Um, you can give us a call, 574-224-3223, or stop by our office, 227 East 9th Street here in Rochester. Love to talk to you about any ideas or questions or visions you have for our community. Brian, thank you very much. We look forward to talking to you again next month. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Brian Johnson with the Community Foundation. That's going to do it for the Trading Post here on this Wednesday. Have a great one.